defense is most a glaring inconsistency? Um, I think it was that, what you said, the inconsistency of doing things right all the time. Um, a play here, a play there, a guy jump out his gap. Um, no responsibility, but trying to make a play. And um, I think that cost us. And I think, you know, towards the end of the season, just going back, you know what I mean, with our guys watching more together, you know what I mean, trying to sh sh explain to the guys the big picture. Like, what do the pitches supposed to look like? And um, I thought they did a decent job of that um, as we start to address it more. And I think moving forward, that's what we'll do more of, just meet more as a unit, front seven, and just kind of, this is why you have to stay in your gap. And uh, that's what we've been doing this spring. You say big picture. What do you mean by that? Like, is there a certain number of points that you don't want to give up, a certain number of yards? How, how's that defined? Yeah, yeah, I normally don't want to give up any points. But uh, <laughs> that's that's a little difficult in our lead. Um, but we have our goals. You know, we want to keep our opponent under 17 points if we can. Um, uh, you know, we hadn't had a, a total amount of yards. It's probably per attempt more than anything, per pass attempt, 5.5, and per run attempt somewhere um, lower than that, 2.5, 2.8, or something like that. But, you know, that's kind of been our goal. But, you know, big picture-wise of just doing your job, I think that's the most important thing that, as a unit, we need to do. You know, stay in your gap, know your responsibility, and do that. And when the ball is not coming in your gap, and it's all the way gone from your gap, then you can start to play football. When, with uh, Kobe and Javon moving on, how much have Rick and Zach kind of stepped up in the middle of that line, and what does it mean to have a guy like here sort of in that mix as well? Well, I tell you this, you know, um, Javon is a, is a great player, and Kobe was a very, very solid football player for us for four years, um, and it's going to be hard to replace those guys. Um, to answer your question, Zach and Rick, yes, we're putting a big responsibility on them to do that, um, but we've only been in practice for two days. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to play defensive line with, with, without pads on you know, to really see what the guy's doing. But those guys are doing well, and they understand, you know, for us to do what we need to do in this conference, they have to play well up front. And obviously with the addition of Kier coming back, that really helps us because that's give a guy who can play multiple spots on the D-line and a guy that has leadership abilities, and he's doing a really good job of doing that. And just, I think, you know, getting a, a new coach in there, Trace, Coach Rocker, I think he's doing a great job with those guys. Uh, he's tough on them, but it's, it's love, and they know that, and, and they're responding in the right way. Is that better? Uh, inside or outside, in your view? Uh, I would hope he's better inside. We need him to play inside. We need him to be really good inside. You know, Zach's over 300 pounds now. Um, so he's going to play inside for us, and he'll play, you know, three technique. He'll play some shade. He'll play some different things on the front. And, you know, he's able to do that because he's a very physical and athletic guy, and he got to continue to learn the scheme and, and continue to learn how we want to play. How much does having a guy like Javon with all his success and about to be a, a top pick in the NFL draft influence a guy like Zach to say, you know, this is what you could be? I hope a lot, and, you know, and that's the one thing, you know, as a defense, we've been showing a lot of clips of Javon playing. And he. the good thing is when you, when you come in, you got good players in front of you, you know what it's supposed to look like. A lot of times when you're a young player, you don't know what it looks like. You don't know what good is. And um, he was able to see good firsthand, see how he practiced, see how he worked, see how he carried himself in the building, outside the building, and all those things was very good. So he set a positive example for him, and we're excited about it. And I, and I believe that, that Zach's seen the way, and, and it's up to him now to do it. Hero, I know it's early on, but in a perfect world, how would you want this defense from an identity standpoint? Um, just not, not just you know, this year, but just the way you guys want them to play. Yeah, a blue collar mentality. I want our guys to be physical. Um, I want our guys to be able to stop the run first. Um, force them to be one-dimensional and throw the football. Um, and then we need to do a better job of turnovers. You look at our first couple of years, it was 28, 27. And then you look at the drop off over the next two years, it was 17, 16, something like that. You're talking about 10 turnovers, that's 10 extra possessions for our offense. Um, so that's a big emphasis right now. We need to get the football better. Um, we've been getting it good and, and we got to continue to do that. Trevor, from the rules, Evolution of the rules standpoint, the offense has gained a lot of ground in the last 10 years or whatever. How do you handle that as a defensive coach? Do y'all squawk and say we need some help rules-wise, or do you just have to live with the new reality? Hey, that ain't changing. Um, just some different things. You know, you just look at, for instance, the, probably the biggest one is the RPO. You know, back when I played, you looked at the guard when I was a safety. And that's what my coach always taught me. Um, you look at the guard right now, and you come running out of the middle of the field, it'd be a touchdown. You know, because of the RPOs and those explain, guys get down the field. Forgive my ignorance, but explain yep. that to me. You're the safety. Ten years ago, you saw the guard. I saw the guard, and I was able to see run or pass off the un uncovered lineman. Okay. Right? So if he passed that, I knew it was passed. I was pedaling in the middle of the field. If he was coming off the line of scrimmage, I was getting in the run game. Well, now you can't teach your safety to do that because, you know, every run looks like a pass and every pass looks like a run. And it's just, it, it, it's crazy, you know, how the game done changed. And, and that ain't changing anytime soon. We got to understand that in zone defense, you know, that's going to pull those Mike and Will linebackers out of the middle of the field. And we got to squeeze the slants with the flat players. 
normally you never had to do that. Um, but I know that's not changing, and um, we have to adapt to it. And uh, we have to adapt to the targeting rules. We got to adapt to all that. And it's for the safety of the game as well. So we got to continue to do a better job of, of doing it, and we got to do a better job of coaching. But if I